Uh, Daniel Marans, what do you make of the civil war on the Republican side? Well, David, I can certainly actually, quite frankly, relate to the feelings of sort of rank-and-file party activists, people that represent, in, in some respects, grassroots sentiment that don't like the idea of sort of the big money leaders in their political party making decisions on behalf of the people that actually knock on doors, that actually go out there and vote, that they were like the, the people that these officials were elected to represent. So where does that put me? Because obviously the rank and file people in this case, or, or the, the somewhat rank and file people, if you think of Rush Limbaugh as rank and file, are have disgusting reactionary views. I, I think that you know, if we were to have David Frum on this program, and, and we've had him on many times, obviously someone who really thinks that the Republican Party needs to remake itself. And, and, and certainly as, as a liberal and as a Democrat, I want that because I want our political spectrum to move back into sort of some semblance of sanity where Republicans are once again representing a, a kind of a, a balance, a, a sort of a moderate counterweight to the Democratic Party, not an extreme right that keeps tugging us further and further to the right. But I think what David Frum would say and what I would say is that this is going to happen. This is going to happen no matter what. And it's, it's better that the rank and file come to these decisions on their own. I mean, perhaps a good analogy is sort of what we're seeing in, in some of these Middle Eastern countries that have overthrown dictators there. That they're looking to, they're enjoying greater democracy. In some cases, reactionaries are filling the void. But those are cycles that perhaps need to happen. You know, I, I, I agree with that, and I think this cycle is inevitable, and, and the fact of the matter is if President Obama had not won re-election, if the Democrats had been on the losing end of the 2012 election, there would be some sort of reckoning in the Democratic Party about what the party stands for and what it represents. So I think it's inevitable that the Republican Party would go through this. I think um, my interest in all of this is, is twofold. First of all, we've heard a lot lately about the Republican Party needed to, uh, to change its message, that it's the way it's communicating that is not working for them. And, you know, if Republicans really think that all they need to do is change the way they communicate and change some of their buzzwords, uh, then they're in for uh, a long haul in all this. Because in my view, it's not, it's not the Republican messaging that's been rejected, it's the Republican ideology, Republican policies on everything from guns to immigration, to women's rights, to the way we see the United States role in the world, has been soundly rejected. And that's where the Republicans, I think, need to start their conversation. So the first issue that I have is it's not just about messaging, it's not just about communications, it's about real policy. Secondly, it's interesting to see the folks like Karl Rove and others now trying to knock down a Tea Party that they really leveraged for the last several years. And what I mean is Karl Rove made a lot of money and his clients made a lot of money by engaging, by leveraging the Tea Party, by having the Tea Party organization, the Tea Party fundraising, the grassroots fundraising to help Karl Rove and the Republican Party. In other words, they made this bed, they've been sleeping in it, and all of a sudden now they don't like it, now they're going to try to <laughs> dump the occupant. It's not that easy. And so I think for a lot of people on the, on the far right who feel burned by this, uh, I can totally relate to them. That, you know, even though I disagree with nearly everything that people on the far right might, their views about women's rights and about abortion and about affirmative action, and we could go down the list, I also appreciate, though, their great frustration that after several years of working incredibly hard for what they believe in and having their views leveraged by the likes of Karl Rove and the Republican establishment, that all of a sudden to be turned away now, to be turned on by Karl Rove and the other establishment figures who are now treating them as if they're some sort of, um, I don't know, some sort of eyesore on the Republican Party, I can only imagine how frustrating that will be, and that is, and I can totally get, therefore, why so many arch conservatives are really upset, and, you know, for the folks like Mark Levin and other radio talkers who certainly represent um, the sort of bedrock Tea Party nature of the Republican Party, I think their anger is certainly justified. There was a fascinating column this week, one of my former colleagues at MSNBC, Howard Feynman, who writes for the Huffington Post, he put it uh, quite bluntly that uh, Karl Rove has gotten this wrong, uh, that Karl Rove has uh, underestimated the power of the Tea Party, and that if Karl Rove thinks that he can somehow bring the Republican Party back from the Tea Party, that, that Karl Rove is finished, that Karl Rove's his judgment is bad, and that his judgment is just as bad as it was in this past election cycle when Karl Rove collected some $300 million and didn't have any victories to show for it. And I think I agree with Howard. I think that Karl Rove is uh, severely misjudging his ability to bring the Republican Party back from the Tea Party, particularly in some places like Iowa and South Carolina and Texas, these are Republican states that are not just Republican, but hard right Republican. And then the Tea Party has taken 
you know, big control there. In my state of Indiana, Richard Luger is perhaps one of the most well-regarded, well-revered Republican senators the state has ever had. He was defeated in a primary by a guy by the name of Murdoch who had since said, you know, crazy things himself about women's rights. And the fact of the matter is the Tea Party has taken some control of each of these state parties. And I'm just not sure that DeCarl or any other establishment Republicans you know, if they want to throw money into some of these races to try to make it a battle, fine by me, but I think it's going to take more than just an organization like Karl Rove's Conservative Victory Fund in order to bring the Republican Party back from the brink. I think it's going to take a fundamental policy shift, policy change, in which a number of Republicans, particularly on the far right, realize that our country has progressed. We've moved beyond the 1950s, where some of the Tea Party figures would like to take us back. And once they finally realize that, then perhaps their voice will start to matter again, and perhaps they'll start to be successful again when it comes to general elections. Did, we are going to. I may, if I may yeah. just for a moment. I I, I I agree. I think that the, there's certainly a component here of moderation and appealing to what works in the country and what doesn't versus sort of the conservatives and the reactionaries here. And and certainly, you know, Michael Lind had a great column in Salon. I think it was actually today that these are the last gas, gasps of the sort of ethnic. Um, not Protestant, white, uh, sort of Anglo-American, um, old South in a lot of ways, sort of trying to assert whatever last shred of cultural power it has through the Republican Party. But I, the only other point, only counterpoint that I might make is that there are some legitimate policy differences here that cross parties and actually line up along, along elite rank and file lines. Hmm. And, I th and I think of that in terms of the accountability of, of money in politics versus people in politics. Uh, I mean, again, keep in mind, Richard Luger was voted out of office not just because he was so moderate, but he didn't even have a home anymore in Indiana. So again, some of the issues of being connected to the people and, and elitism and, and expressions of, of rage and populism and, and disappointment with our institutions. You know, a lot of people view the Tea Party as a response as much to the bailout of the banks as it was to the Obama presidency. Such a good, such a good point. Great point, and in fact, I think there are a lot of similarities there between right and left, and frustration with how uh, a lot of corporate elites have been taken care of in this country and by our political system, and the rest of us have not.